Hello friends and nerds, I'm gonna show you guys how to get this to this. Let's get started. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to get expanded foam or polystyrene foam to look something like this. This is one of the cave walls. I made about 30 pieces and I'm gonna show you in about five minutes how to do so. Now, why am I making this video? There's a lot of great hobbyists out there on YouTube and they do amazing jobs at tutorials. So think of this as just a short five minute guide and I'm gonna put a lot of links in the description to show you some other people that I've gleaned knowledge from. So hopefully if you need more of an in-depth guide, you can head to those resources. So hopefully this is just a jump place or a jump start for you. And I noticed there's not many people that deal with expanded foam and there's a few reasons why and I'll get right to it. For this build, I'm using expanded foam rather than XPS. Now XPS is what you find in insulation. It's a very hard and sturdy foam. It's fantastic for crafting, but why am I using this? Expanded foam you can find almost anywhere. If you have someone that has moved or someone that is buying a couch or TV, it probably comes with some of this stuff. So the nice thing about this is that it's free. It keeps your building costs to a minimum. Now this is the most important thing about expanded foam. You need to cut it at a high temperature and you need to do it in somewhere well ventilated. Now behind me you can see that I have this wonderful machine. It's actually a vented system that goes out my window as well as I have a 3M gas mask. So those are ways in which I stay safe when I'm cutting this because it does let off toxic fume. You don't want to do it in somewhere that's tight spaced and you want it to be somewhere well ventilated. That is the biggest thing with expanded foam. With really any foam, whenever you're cutting foam for an extended amount of time, you want to make sure that you do it safely. So whether it's expanded foam or XPS and whether you're using a hot knife or normal X-Acto knife, make sure that you're doing it in a well ventilated area, you're wearing a proper mask, and if you can do it outside and maybe with some fans on or downwind, that's probably the most ideal. Next, I took my foam cutter that I bought off Amazon and I cut my foam into strips. I cut these strips into four, six, 10, and 12 inch increments, as well as I had some thicker pieces, so I made some cool uh, items out of that. Next, you're going to take your hot tool and you're going to rub it across the front of your expanded foam. At this high temperature, the foam is going to shrink and start to give you a cave-like wall. You can add some lines even into it just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Once again, make sure you're in somewhere well ventilated. Do not do this without a mask because you'll be doing a lot of cutting. Now the problem with XPS foam is the fact that if you paint it, it's going to seep through and you're going to lose a lot of your paint. So what you gotta do is seal it and you're going to use this stuff. Now it's a mixture of water, flour, white glue, and some black paint, as well as some salt just to kill any bacteria that is within it. You're gonna put a generous coat on all of your pieces. I even had to do a second coat on a few of them, and you're gonna have to let it dry for a long time. If you look in the description, you'll find a link for the exact recipe to this gooey mixture. Finally, you're ready to paint. Me and my wife went with a light gray, just a homebrew of mixing white and black together. Be sure to go light on the black paint because it will make it quite dark very quickly. And once that dried, we then did a highlight and a dry brush of some white on top. You could also throw in some other colors if you're interested, if you want to add some greens or maybe you want to add some browns, just to give it a little bit of contrast, that's fine. And to finish off, we went with null oil that you can buy at any hobby store. Now, null oil gets very expensive very quickly, so you can find cheaper options on Amazon. And if you Google it, you can find some terrain washes as well. Once that was dry, the final step was one last white highlight just to bring back some of the contrast and there you have it as a bonus we just add one last little feature and that was a magnet to the base at the very bottom I burnt a hole and then added a magnet and covered it with some hot glue and then a slight coat of gray that way it would stick to my tiles which I also added magnets to and there you have it this is not necessary but it's kind of a cool feature that I like uh, make sure that your walls don't keep falling down and so it's up to you if you want to add that to your build and that's it guys I hope this was helpful I want to contribute to the community and hopefully the links below will help you guys get started
Thank you for checking this out. Craft safely, and we'll see you guys next time.